four, they will be favored to win the national championship. The national semifinals begin with Dick Bennett's Cinderella Wisconsin Badgers, who ran roughshod through the West Regional and will meet a Michigan State team that soared through the rarefied air of a Final Four a year ago and will accept nothing less than a championship now. North Carolina has come out of the blue to return its storied program to familiar grounds and will face Florida's young dynamo coach Billy Donovan and the Gators who have dazzled and dared to be different. The quest, the dream, the vision, the final four is next. Spartans at the Big Ten will meet for the fourth time this season. Later, another bracket buster, the North Carolina Tar Heels, and yet another one, the Florida Gators, will meet in the other semifinal here in Indianapolis. with you yet again at the Final Four, Billy. And uh, you look at these four teams. What a configuration of, uh, of four we have here. In the final poll, Michigan State was ranked second in the country, Florida 13th. Carolina and Wisconsin unranked, yet they've made it to the promised land. Jim, when you think back before the season started, however, three of these teams were in the top eight in the United States in preseason. Only Wisconsin was not in that group. Let's talk about how the Badgers made it here to Indianapolis out of the West Regional. What were their key ingredients, Billy? Well, in Mark Bashar, they have one of the best passers of all big men in college basketball. Today, however, he must shoot extremely well. Also, we have a John Bryant, who is 18 for 36 for three in this tournament. He has been lighting it up. And then Mike Kelly, they have the defensive player of the year in the Big Ten. Great hands, great anticipation. All right, Michigan State, the only number one seed to make it here. Well, this is the Flint connection. Cleaves to Peterson. They have been truly outstanding. Peterson, the MVP of his region. Granger, who can step outside, was all region. One of the best pure shooters of big men in the country. And if you're talking about leadership, the team Cleaves is the best that's come along in a long, long time, Jim. This Michigan State team with uh, such a tradition back in Flint. They've been playing together here at State for at least three years, by and large. And what about what makes them go? Well, the things that you love about this basketball team is that Flint connection. Now, here you're going to see a great offensive set. Cleves and Peterson will eventually hook up. A solid screen is going to be sent, and then they'll create a clear out for Peterson. As Cleves sees the opening, comes back ball side, and then delivers the ball to Peterson. Here you see it in full action. Hudson will clear out. Here comes the solid screen for Cleves. Peterson setting up his man against Iowa State perfectly. Cleves will return back over to his side, and then watch what Peterson does. He takes off, and the perfect lob to the basket. All right, Billy, the Wisconsin Badgers have stepped on the final four floor for the first time in 59 years. They've just come bursting out of the locker room. We're waiting for Michigan State's arrival. Let's get the latest on these teams. Let's check in with the reporters, beginning with Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie? All right, Jim, it looks like Wisconsin's going to be switching things up on the defensive end today. In their first three meetings against Michigan State, Mike Kelly was assigned to Mateen Cleaves. question we have much more confidence in our bench earlier in the year we only played eight or nine guys now throughout the entire tournament we've gone 10 deep now for the Michigan State side of things let's send you over to Armageddon thanks Bonnie Jim you mentioned Michigan State they just came out of the locker room moments ago I asked Tom Izzo what was he going to tell him in the locker room he said I'm going to point to both my 
Mateen and Mo Peterson and say, you know what? You guys have done so much for this program. You've taken it so far. Now's the time to finish it. Mateen, you've talked about the dream. Now's the time to live it. Just a few moments ago, I asked Mateen, would he speak up to his teammates before the game? He said, you bet I am. And I'm going to tell him the same thing I told him before the Iowa State game. Guys, leave it all on the floor. Jim, back to you. He came back for his senior year for this event, the Final Four. There are those who believe he will not let them lose. The Final Four is next. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Semifinal Game is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, Fidelity Investments, United Airlines, and by Miller Lite. Back at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis, and let's meet the starting players in national semifinal game number one. We turn it over to Jackie Bowe. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the NCAA Final Four and for the first round semifinal game between the University of Wisconsin's Badgers and the Michigan State University Spartans. Let's meet the starting lineups. At forward for Wisconsin, a junior listed at 6'9", from East Peoria, Illinois, number 50, Mark Grishaw. At forward for Michigan State, a junior listed at 6'8", from Troywood, Ohio, number 34, Andre Hudson. Forward for Wisconsin, a junior listed at 6'8 from Brookville, Wisconsin, number 15, Andy Kowski. At forward for Michigan State, a senior listed at 6'7 from Flint, Michigan, number 42, Morris Peterson. Wisconsin, a junior listed at 6'3 from Madison, Wisconsin, number 32, Roy Poon. At center for Michigan State, a senior listed at 6'9 from Finlay, Ohio, number 43, A.J. Granger. Wisconsin, a junior listed at 6'3 from Menoni Falls, Wisconsin. Number 22, Mike Kelly. At guard for Michigan State, a junior listed at 6'3 from Flint, Michigan. Number 14, Charlie Bell. Wisconsin, a senior listed at 6'2 from Plymouth, Minnesota. Number 10, John Bryant. At guard for Michigan State, a senior listed at 6'2 from Flint, Michigan. Number 12, Mateen Please. The head coach for Wisconsin is Dick Bennett. For Michigan State, Tom Izzo. Izzo and Michigan State swept the three games during the season and Big Ten tournament. It's the first time two conference foes have tangled at the Final Four since the Big Ten delivered Michigan and Illinois back in 1989. Let's get the Packer points for this one, Billy. Well, Jim, Spartan Mo Pete. Mo Peterson has just been on fire. He was the most valuable player in the Big Ten tournament and also in his region. And was the most valuable player in the region last year. Very difficult to stop. Kelly is going to be on him early. Let's see what happens there. The second time around, Michigan State does an incredible job on second chance points. They not only are a great rebounding team, the best in Big Ten history, but they are great on the break. When you don't make the shot, they really battle on the boards. And if you're the Badger, you have got to rebound. Michigan State had a game this year where they had more rebounds than Wisconsin had points. They've done that six times this year. Obviously, Wisconsin's had to keep them off the boards. And Brick City Blues, I really believe if Wisconsin can shoot somewhere near 45%, they will be in this ball game with a chance to win it. Much less than that, they're in serious trouble. 
They met three weeks ago today in the Big Ten semifinals. And Michigan State prevailed for the third time this season, winning by nine. You could have never imagined we were there, Billy. We would see these teams in Indianapolis with this much riding on it. Jim, in that game, Michigan State had a 19 point lead with 16 minutes to go. Wisconsin went on a 15 to 2 run. Uh, that has to give them a lot of confidence coming into a ball game like today. First final four of the century is underway. And Mateen Cleaves directing the Michigan State Spartans. Uh, watch this matchup, Kelly and Peterson. Can Peterson get inside enough where he's got a huge rebound? Boone hits the floor. Cleaves long in the jumper. Mo Pete with the rebound. There's what I was talking about. He gets six over six rebounds a game. Cleaves. Have a big advantage. And pulled away by Kelly. And you see that blocking te technique by Wisconsin. They were one of only two teams this year to out-rebound Michigan State. Bryant, their hot shooter in the tournament, their leading scorer, all four games, misfires on his first attempt. Nobody gets back in defensive transition any better than Wisconsin. They don't give up a lot of easy baskets. And how will Tom Izzo Take advantage of the size differential on this matchup right here, Kelly and Peterson. Bell off on a three. Underneath, it's Boone. Wisconsin, Jim, they're not going to want to run, but they will run on a steal. Very conservative, and they use the clock. Boone, a high, banks it home for the game's first points. Only way he could get that shot off was to put it high on the glass. Nice maneuver. And that was high above the window. It really was. A little one four set. Hudson had position. Granger didn't deliver the ball. There will be some bruising screens in this game. Low post up by Peterson. Peterson again. Kelly trying to defend. And Michigan State's on the board. Uh, Kelly is the defensive player of the year in the Big Ten, but almost always matched up against a guard. Really a tough task for him today. Boone so brilliant down the stretch in the win over Purdue in the regional final. And last touch by the Badgers. Jim, one of the things, and you say, well, how about on the other end of the floor? Peterson will have to guard a guard, but I think with his quickness, long, rangy arms, he'll have a better chance with Boone, particularly down and low, than Kelly will have with Peterson on the other end of the floor. There's the one four set again. Ranger sets a pick and a near switch. Hudson will he challenge Kowski. Underneath Hudson hit it off the front of the rim, but follows it in with a putback. One of the more underrated players in all of the country is Hudson. Big time underrated. He really is. I mean, he is so valuable. He's so efficient with the ball when he gets it down in low. Doesn't make mistakes. Bryant comes off the screen. Has it stripped away. On the way up by Cleves. Bryant put the ball right out in front of him. Play by Hudson gets it in, gets it back out to get better position. Lost control of it going up. Kelly tipped it around, back out the bell. No reset on the 35. Peterson's wide open. He has it on the wing with a three. Too strong. Good look though by Michigan State because Kelly got caught inside trying to help rebounding. Wisconsin's already turned it over twice. Boone penetrates. And he's fouled on the drive. Two turnovers significant because in their last matchup with Michigan State, they only committed four for the entire game. This team is amazing in assist turnover ratio, Jim. Go ahead. And uh, third travels through the West. The first two rounds, they beat teams coached by men who have won NCAA championships. Jerry Tarkanian and Lou Olson went out in the first two rounds. The hands of Dick Bennett's Badgers. 
Jim, I'll say something about those teams. It'd be very difficult for their coaches who have teams that like to run up and down the floor, Fresno State, Arizona, and LSU, to try to get their kids to focus in on just how Wisconsin plays. So in a way, Wisconsin had a big advantage playing teams that weren't used to their style. For Shaw out, we saw Charlie Wills enter, and Roy Boone will have one more after the Granger foul. This Wisconsin team not Considering the other clubs in the final four, not a great free throw shooting team, only 68% on the year. Little hedge moves, but no switches. Peterson, big step, drops it inside. Granger underneath, he traveled. Michigan State through the Midwest, and maybe these scores are a little deceiving. Utah led in the second half. They just blanked Syracuse down the stretch and came back from eight down late against Iowa State to prevail. Well, three incredible runs to get into this uh, Final Four completely for uh, Michigan State. They were out of it against Syracuse. They certainly were behind against Iowa State. They did make great comebacks. Wills just into the game, hits the jumper. A two, and the Badgers have the lead. This is really critical for Dick Bennett's team to go ahead and stay in this game as long as they can. Hudson, are they going to count it? I don't think so. It must have been before. I heard the whistle a little push before. Basket counts. Whistle was blown as he was making a move. Hudson again coming up big. Foul on Kowski. His first basket does count, Billy. You're right. Hudson to the line for a three point opportunity. Jim Hudson in, in the ball game so far, like Utah, 19 and 8. Syracuse, 11 and 5. Iowa State, 17 and 11. He just comes up big and solid, game in, game out. Boone out and Dwayne Dwayne, senior from Bloomington, Indiana, has entered for Wisconsin. This will be interesting because there's a young man that comes in and as Dick Bennett told us the other day, feels a sense of urgency that he has to score. That is either going to be good or bad for this club because Michigan State plays solid deep. Hudson with five. Spartans lead. This was the first basket of the game. Jim Nance along with Billy Packer from the final four. Checking the data bank. National championships since 1989 when uh, well, Michigan won over Seton Hall. Big Ten has not won a title since 89. But you know what's interesting, Billy? Wisconsin becomes the sixth different Big Ten team to make the Final Four since 1992 alone with Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio State, and Michigan State. Shows tremendous balance in the league, but maybe nobody good enough to really step up to take it all. So maybe this year. Until this year, possible. Here we see Richardson on Bryant. Somehow Wisconsin's got to get Bryant open. Richardson with really fresh legs, a great leaper, will take away that jump shot. Good move by Tom Izzo here, because Bryant is not off with his shooting yet today. And to play against a guy like Richardson, that can jump so well, he'll have a hard time getting it off. Dwayne's pass picked off. Turnover. Peterson with the theft. Cleaves challenged and spins it off the rim. He'll go to the line for two. Wisconsin's first Final Four since 41. The Badgers won the championship that year in Kansas City eight months before the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Jim, interestingly, back in those days, you only had to win three games. A lot different than the uh, brutal six-game run now. Talk about an NCAA stretch where the Badgers were just really dormant from the national scene. They didn't even compete in the NCAA tournament in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. They went 47 years between appearances from 1947 to 94. That year they were 20 and 3. Just think how long it was before they won 20 games again. <laughs> Done that now back to back years for the first time ever. And Cleves two free throws gives the Spartans the three point lead. Now you look at this club on the floor right now for Wisconsin. You say, where are they going to get any baskets? You can see no square up at all there. Richardson really presented a problem for Bryant. And almost picked off by Kelly, who had 17 steals through four games of the tournament. Bryant so far has been the man who's been getting him baskets in the tournament, but not to this point tonight early. Two tough missed shots. for him. 
Kelly, as we saw right there, had 10 steals in one game for a school record, tying school record against Texas. 10 steals in a game, that's amazing. Turnover, traveling called. We Dick saw the two uh, misfires by Bryant. One thing that we heard a lot from the coach, Coach Bennett, and as we see Maurice Linton come in, is he told his team all week, you've got to fight for your feet. And it didn't look like Bryant was set on that last shot. Well, he's got a man on him that's not only quick and fresh, there's a great play by Mateen Cleese. And he got it before it went out, but slaps it at the other end out of bounds. Great effort. Uh, Jim, that was a smart play by Cleves. Slap the ball down the other end of the floor and just put possibly one of your teammates can be in a position. This is a very smart move on his part and quite an effort. The inbound from the backcourt with 19 seconds on the shot clock. What Dick Bennett has to do is to find some way to score. Linton in good position, the pass is too late. Kelly got it back to Linton quickly, the jumper, and Boone with Richardson inside. Good battle there, and Boone now with six badger points. Maybe the only guy in this club quick enough and strong enough to go over Richardson. Excellent position. Bell with a three. Nice and defensive play by Rashaw. Boone picks it off the floor. Anaconya and Richardson have come in as subs for Michigan State. Linton had the big game against Indiana. Not able to deliver yet so far, but he is getting nice position on the inside. Trying to go inside to Anaganya. Oh, Wills and Anaganya really fighting inside. I'm waiting for a whistle. There have been some. Well, it's all clean. I mean, the guys are making a lot of contact, but it's good, clean, hard-nosed play. So far, they haven't figured out a way to get Peterson open inside. Well, he doesn't want to be out there with Kelly. Kelly fights over screens well. Bell drives. And a Gandhi underneath with the putback. This is the one difference in Michigan State this year and last year. Last year with Antonio Smith inside, you can expect that kind of basket time and again. And Aganya is a guy that's got to give him the presence in the paint. Rashaw with the ball, the leading scorer on the season, the only Wisconsin Badger who averages double figures. He's not scored to this point. Nice. Nice move for Shaw the other way. Can't finish. One of his big problems. And a reach in on Kelly. Made some move that Vershaw at the other end to free himself. Well, here's one of the things, to make the move, which was excellent, but you've got to be able to finish. He didn't stay with the shot. You see how his head turned? Watch his head turn, Jim, away from view of the basket. You've got to stay right there and keep your eye up on that portion of the, of the backboard that you're going to lay it up. Davis has come in for Kelly has two fouls. Oh, that's really huge because they not only want to keep him on the floor and he's capable of playing 35 or more minutes, but uh, they can all afford to have his defensive presence off the floor. Mike Chappelle. And the basket counts. Well, here's a young man that left Duke, came to Michigan State and figured, well, Duke gets the Final Fours, and now he finds himself playing here at Michigan State in the Final Four. An excellent outside shooter. Tom Izzo has tried to toughen him up some, and there was a tough up move going to the basket. Chappelle was a two-year player, played in 68 games for Duke. That was the second foul call on Kowski. It was so unusual. I can remember looking over my right shoulder last year at Tropicana Field. Chappelle was wearing Michigan State gear, standing uh, uh, with, the, with the fans, the Spartan fans who stood the entire game. He was not allowed down on the floor as a transfer and watching his Michigan State team lose to his old team, Duke. Well, he made 36 of 83 threes, 43 percent at Duke University in his last year there. So uh, he is a guy that can threaten. it. And Dick Bennett just struggling right now to try to find a way to score. Now it's Bell on Bryant. Badger's biggest deficit now, six. And against this team, six is a, like 16 against a club that would want to run up and down the floor. Cleaves with the steal. Cleaves with no one near him. Bershaw, usually with an excellent assist turnover ratio, laid it on a platter for Cleaves. Dick Bennett needs a timeout, and his team is in some serious trouble early.
Michigan State has doubled them up here at the start of the game, 16-8. A great half court set here by Michigan State. Watch these hard double screens set up. Chapel comes around the side to find himself way open and takes it right to the basket. One screen, two screens, no way to get around it. Chappelle takes it right in there, nice job. Wisconsin comes out again with Kelly on the bench with two fouls, Davis handles the ball. And again, can they get Bryant loose? He's running really well without the ball but can't get a solid screen to get open. It's a seven point run by the Spartans and the biggest deficit of the tournament for Wisconsin. Basket will not count. It's the first time in the tournament Wisconsin's been down by eight. Jim, one of the things Brian has to do, he's running all over the place, but he's got to time those solid screens to be open when the pass can be delivered. The foul was on Mike Chappelle, another time out of the floor. Wisconsin down early with uh, a sloppy start here for the Badgers, Billy. Well, this is a team that has had 12 games this year with 10 or fewer turnovers. They already have four, and two of them have turned into baskets. So this is very uncharacteristic of this ball club. And here you can see Mateen please really taking advantage of a turnover. When they knocked off the number one seed in the West, Arizona, Wisconsin gave up only two points on fast break baskets. 11.3 turnovers per game is what this team averages. That's a new school record. But give Michigan State a lot of credit here, Jim. Now they're in a zone for the first time. Possibly Bryant can find that jump shot. They need to go inside and kick out. Let him get open. He really needs to get one started. Boom, not this time. Ball on the floor, picked up by Bell. Two back as the guards don't go to the glass. Stranger too strong. Back to him. That was Chappelle with another nice rebound. Hudson wanting low post position. Nice job by Linton to close out Granger who wanted the jump shot. Last touch by Bell. Wisconsin ball. Michael Jordan led North Carolina to the 1982 NCAA championship and you can chat with Michael live Monday night at 730 Eastern time. Just click on chats at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online keyword is CBS Sportsline. Jim I wonder if he'll make the statement Bill Russell made the other day. What a statement that was Thursday night at the NCAA salute dinner. Probably the greatest champion player the game has ever known. Two NCAA titles, gold medal, 11 championships in the pros. Said the greatest championship he ever played in was the NCAA tournament his first year taking San Francisco to the title. Incredible statement. More meaningful than any other title. 1955. That's coming from a guy that one of the smartest fellows that ever played the game. So uh, quite a statement by him. It was a magical night with the four coaches present. Bill Walton, Bill Russell, and John Wooden getting uh, the final four festivities underway in such a huge fashion. Davis with the body. Now that goes to show you how strong Mateen Cleaves is. Davis had the perfect angle. Mateen turned his shoulder, and Davis just flew off him like a fly. Incredible play there. Mateen, of course, great football player in high school and showed why that upper body strength is still there. Nice movement. Peterson wildly. Hudson underneath, and he's hammered. Peterson not able to get on track down on this end of the floor, much like Brian on the other end of the floor. Peterson got fouled. He's talking to the officials, but didn't get to the call. What do you think about Peterson, Jim? He was the MVP of the regional last year. He's the MVP of the Big Ten tournament this year and the MVP of the regional this year. So he's three for three. Player of the year in the Big Ten. Played him more games than any other Spartan in history. Hudson misses the front end, or the first uh, of two. Peterson, a fifth year senior, when he came to Michigan State, had a problem with his finger, sat out. So he does have that maturity and experience to be the explosive player he is. Hudson, another football player, was a quarterback in high school, recruited by all the big powers. Out of that zone, Tom Izzo just threw the zone at him one time, and I think Wisconsin missed the opportunity to get the ball to Bryant against that zone. You need to get your hot shooter untracked early. Boom, wild 
play out of bounds. And that's six trips in a row and without you, any production. You know, not only is Kelly's absence hurting them defensively, Jim, and the fact that they don't have him on the floor for his presence, he's the guy that makes the offense go. And with him on the bench and two fouls, Wisconsin's really hurting on both ends. Kirk Penny has come in, a freshman from Auckland, New Zealand. Number 20 for the Badgers. Adam Ballinger, 55 for Michigan State. Leeds goes inside, kick it back out. He'll step in for it. Bell controlling, dominating the boards. Michigan State ball. Well, that doesn't surprise you, does it, Jim? Well, this number one rebounding team in the country, rebounding margin-wise, and they've already got six offensive boards. Well, Bell, a guard, will be going out right now. Last year, led the team in rebounding in five separate games, having responsibility in the backcourt. So it shows you how he can get on the glass. Peterson quickly with the jumper. Probably rushed that a little bit. He's got to be more patient in this ball game. His team's got a nice working margin. He doesn't have to worry about his own. And what I think has hurt Wisconsin is that Dick Bennett has had to go to crazy lineups. Blocked by Ballinger. Tom Izzo saying, well, you want to go to some crazy lineups? I will too, but I've got control of this game right now. I think Dick Bennett is going to have to, in the next couple of minutes, get Kelly back out there. And I know he doesn't want to play him with two fouls on him, but they have got to figure out a way to generate some offense. Four and a half minutes without a field goal. Linton coming in off the bench. Penny can shoot it if he can get three. David Thomas defending in for the first time. Everybody on this Michigan State team can guard you. Tom Izzo's even over there guarding people. Shaw spins out. The decision by Mateen, nothing there. He really knows how to run a basketball team. There's one thing, guys have point guard skills, but it takes a while to have point guard experience. The team does know how to run a basketball team. Peterson back over, Hudson, charge. Nice job by Vershaw, moving those feet instead of trying to go for the block out. Now we talk about, this should be illegal, Jim. There are six men on Michigan State playing defense. <laughs> Jim Nance, Billy Packer returning to Indianapolis and the six minute stretch without scoring for Wisconsin, Billy. Two reasons for that. Kelly out of the ball game so they don't have the man that would go ahead and master the half court offense. But the other thing is that Michigan State's playing great defense. Talked about John Wooden being here the other night. His Jim, daughter, I'm, I'm going to put the program in his <laughs> hand right there. It'd only be appropriate. Certainly one of the greatest that's ever been involved with basketball, inducted to the Hall of Fame, both as a player and a coach. And how many times he took the Bruins and his the daughter, national crown. His daughter Nan here with him and uh, from Martinsville, Indiana. So this is back home again in Indiana for And at coach 89, Martin. is there anybody with a clearer mind, Jim? How about anybody at 50? <laughs> Set, get the ball inside, look to go outside with it. For Shaw, that's it. He's on the board for the first time. Good job by Dick Bennett to get his team in some semblance of offense. Kelly back out on the floor. They can't wait much longer. They keep games close to the best, but they have to show they can score. Michigan State will not be impatient like LSU or Arizona or Fresno. They played these guys three times before, plus many times in their career against the Dick Bennett offense and defense. Leaves. And foul on Michigan State. Rashad with the leg. Look at now the difference, Jim. You notice how he kept his head up that time, stayed right with the shot. Now watch his head on this play. He'll keep it right on focus as to where he has to put that ball on the board. The other end, Anaconda with the foul, his first, fourth team. And Kelly's back in for the Badgers with his two fouls. Wayne got open, but Peterson did a good job chasing him down. Vinny Bell collapsed on him. 
Really thought Penny should have put up the shot there when he had the man on the back. It was an easy opportunity to go to the line for two. Jim, this was a, uh, a drought there for Wisconsin, but in 1996, Michigan State was held scoreless for the first mi nine minutes and 36 seconds of a game against Wisconsin. In the first half, they were four for 26. So they know what it feels like. A little zone activity again by Michigan State. I bet you Dick Bennett wishes he had Brian on the floor right now. Penny and Duaney are probably the two best from out here. Bershaw can shoot from the outside, too. There's Penny from the corner. It is three. Good spot up by Penny. Got beyond the reaches of the wing of the zone. Michigan State has also run dry for five minutes without a field goal. Well, Jim, when you know the only basket you're going to get her in the half court set, unless you make a steal as Cleves did before, it's tough. Bershaw will be called for it outside. Next Sunday on CBS, Richard Dreyfus, Brian Dennehy, Noah Wiley, Sam Elliott. They all star in an unprecedented live television event, Fail Safe, one week from tomorrow on CBS. The team earlier this year had 20 assists, a new Big Ten record against Michigan. I think it's interesting, after that game, he got on the microphone and said, we are going to win the national championship. I mean, he has been a guy that didn't want anything less, but he doesn't hit that one. That was senior day. They went out on senior day in some kind of style, beating their arch rival Wolverines by 51. Dwayne, Dwayne. Uh, Peterson ought to attack him with the dribble a little bit more than that. Another turnover, maybe? No, saved by Vershaw. Litton had the shot, but he's a little out of his range. Five on the shot clock. Vershaw knows it. Cleves comes in underneath and bounces it off his foot. Let's take a look at the CBS Sports Line stat of the game for the first half. Offensive rebounds largely in favor of Michigan State. Complete stats after the game, cbs.sportsline.com. And Bryant comes back into the game for Wisconsin, and he has not scored. You can see what Dick Bennett is trying to do here. He is trying to find somebody that consistently hit the jump shot. I said Bryant came in 18 for 36 of threes in the tournament so far, but was not able to get any good looks. There he's open now. That's, well, passed up the shot, stepped in, and uh, nothing there. They closed in on him. Should have set those feet, as Dick Bennett teaches. He waited too long. Shaw. But you don't get many offensive rebounds against this team, do you? Only one so far. That one slides off the rim, and Penny, with some quality minutes, gets the board. And of course, one of the reasons you don't, if you're Wisconsin, they send two guards back at all times, not even crashing the boards. So that long rebound is not available. Good hedge move that time by Cleves to cut off Bryant. There was some concern how Wisconsin will respond to playing in a dome. Penny. Ranger, not a team that has a whole lot of experience of playing in uh, national tournaments to this to this length, where you're going to get dome experience. They did play at the Carrier Dome this year in the regular season and had a horrid shooting performance. Well, I think more than the dome effect is the fact that Michigan State just doesn't give you long looks at the basket. They close out very rapidly. Michigan State has gone seven plus minutes without a field goal. Missing their last seven shots. Peterson making eight shots. Peterson has got to take better shots. He is not scoring so far today. He's one for five. He's starting to rush things a little bit. He'll be patient and the game will come to him. That's Linton's range. Oh, way too strong. That's as good a look as they've had the whole game. Absolutely. Perfect shot for him. Wisconsin, the one this year that's done better than anybody else, Duaney Duaney. He was 10 for 20, scored 33 points, but today he hasn't been able to do anything. Bryant reaching in on Peterson, his first. Peterson used the good screen that time to get open down inside, had superior size and quickness. Bryant, no match. The Bills here's the number 10, Sean Bryant, makes up his first as the eighth team. 
I like this move by Dick Bennett now, though. He takes Kelly out of the game, Jim. The reason for it, he doesn't want that third foul on him with just 3.34 to go and his team just down four. So a good gamble. One and one for Peterson. Never missed in the NCAA oh. tournament. He's 12 for 12, now 13 for 13. The best free throw to rip. Free throw shooter in the tournament so far this year. That's 13 for 13 in the tournament this year, 15 for 15 in his career in the tournament. Those free throws will help him on his next jump shot. Mark my word, Jim. Get the feel back. Last time Wisconsin was in the tournament was 1941. For $12, you could buy a round trip train ticket and a ticket to the game to go to Kansas City and see Wisconsin, coached by Bud Foster, beat Washington State for the national championship. And the tournament most outstanding player was John Cotts, who had 12 points in the game. Wisconsin won it 39 34. Jim, take a look at the lane. It was only six feet across here. You wonder where the mic and drill came from? That's because you were right into the basket. Could you imagine what guys would be doing today if you're allowed to set up that close? It'd just be a pass and a dunk. I look at that footage, and I think if you were able to colorize it, you would find out that that actually was footage from this year's Wisconsin team. They, a lot of people say they play like teams of the 40s and 50s. Well, the score of that championship game was 39-34. We may be on target today. That one might outscore this one. Bryant just can't get himself squared up and open. Boom, with a good move, but again, they couldn't finish. Got some numbers here. Great job by Wisconsin getting back on defense when it looked like Michigan State had an opportunity for a fast break layup. Offensive foul on the inside. Coming up, Pennzoil at the half. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Coach Bobby Crimmins will analyze the first half. And they will be presenting the Chevrolet Player and Coach of the Year awards all coming up on Pennzoil at the half. 2.51 to go in the half. That's the second on Hudson, and we certainly are here in Indianapolis near the old brickyard as Wisconsin's missed its last five and Michigan State flanking its last eight but shots from the field. In the three games they've played this year, 61-44, 59-54, 55-46. The best Wisconsin has done is at Michigan State where they only lost by five points. But you can see what the scores look like. Nice drive, no place to go. Lucky to get it out to Boone, double team. Wills with the tip. And a near offensive rebound there for the Badgers, but Cleves with the sure hand. Yeah, so strong on the inside. He really didn't have the best grab of that of anybody, but pulled it away. Ranger. And Davis walks out with it. He hustled for the long rebound. Davis has been able to get some dribble penetration, but then there's no place to go because he's so small. When he gets in there, he can't find an opening. Under two minutes to play in the half. Boom, outside, bangs home a three. He is probably the most athletic player on this Wisconsin squad and matching up pretty well with Michigan State's athleticism. He has nine of their 16, and Wisconsin trails by only three. No field goal for 10 minutes. Well, that breaks the record that they had in the game I talked about in 1996. Bryant almost stripped it away. And pulled away by Will. Wow, what defense on the inside. Well, none other than Judd Heathcote said, the tip for this game is that the first team that gets the 40 will win. He might be right. Nice touch by Michigan State. There he is, Judd Heathcote. Oh, look at him sucking that stuff. Wait till I or on his finger. Wait till I talk to him about that. <laughs> he won the championship 1979. Tom Izzo was on his staff for 12 years. When Izzo took over as coach, there was a memo left on Izzo's desk from Judd, a departing memo, and it said, 
Get Mateen Cleaves, <laughs> who was then uh, a senior high school player back in Flint. He's the Bob Newhart of coaching, if you ever get a chance to meet him in a hotel lobby, because he's got the driest sense of humor anybody you ever want to talk to. And Davis draws another foal. Heathcote doesn't like what he sees. Wouldn't like this footage either. The team drives. Nothing there. But give again, just as I'm giving credit for Michigan State's defense, Wisconsin the same way. Nothing coming easy. Four guys around the basket. And how many wide open jump shots have we seen in this game? Very few. The one by Linton was about the only one in the first half by either team. Davis with two shots. Anna Ganya called for his second. And Jim, you talked about Judd Heathcote in that team of 1979. They walked through their opponents. Pete Lamar by 31, LSU 16, Notre Dame 12, and then, of course, the all-time disaster in the semifinals. They beat Penn 101 to 67, and then really manhandled Indiana State 75-64. So they were in total control of that run to the national championship behind Greg Kelser and Matt Johnson. That run actually went right through the city of Indianapolis. They won two games here before they went to Salt Lake City. Timeout called. They beat LSU and Notre Dame here. Timeout called. 50 seconds to go in the half. At CBS.com. Well, 50 seconds to go. Michigan State ball. Cleves always so good at end of the half, end of the game situations. He has not really had an assist in this game. The Big Ten all-time leader in that category. You can see these hedge moves by Wisconsin. Just great defensive intensity. They're not switching out front. Trap Langham leaves after Bershaw blocked the Granger shot. Well, Jim, we've been together for many years, and you know what it's like for the favored team to be held in check for a long period of time. They start looking at that clock and saying, is today the day in a one and done tournament? Sometimes the pressure moves in the other direction. And right now I sense that by Michigan State. They are not playing with confidence. Adam Ballinger in and ooh, a little passing elbow. That was in the direction Shaw. of Vershaw. Bryant trying to run and get open, but they are really schooled as to how to take away that jump shot. Four second differential on the clocks. Wills. Ranger up high for the rebound. Cleaves again so dangerous here. Ten seconds to go in the half. Normally, Clemenza would like a timeout here, but he's not taking it. Cleaves tries to go outside. Bell with two seconds. Three pointer. And Wisconsin shuts them down from the field. The final 11 minutes, 37 seconds from the field without a Spartan field goal. Tremendous defensive intensity on both ends of the floor. Let's go down to Armin Katay. And Armin? Tom, you said it could be ugly. With all due respect, if Jim Azzard would look like this, particularly on the offensive end. Well, I, you know, I, under the basket, it's... Uh, you know, we're not, we're, we missed some shots, and I thought we've done a decent job defensively. I thought we've had some looks under there. We just missed shots. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank you. All right, Armin, Michigan State led by as many as nine at 17 to eight with 11 and a half to go. But now it's a two-point game at halftime. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Semifinal Game is sponsored by Budweiser, Microsoft, Payne Weber, and by Oldsmobile. 